The battle between farmers and large corporations, like John Deere, is quickly becoming one of the most pressing issues in the U.S. agricultural sector. For men over 40 living in the heart of America, this situation represents much more than just a business dispute. It's about preserving a way of life deeply rooted in the country's history and culture. If you support farmers' rights, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and share this video with more people. Let's give a voice to American farmers. In recent years, U.S. farmers have been facing an increasingly difficult reality. Their agricultural equipment, which used to be repaired with simple tools and some mechanical know-how, has now become highly technological machines, filled with complex software requiring constant updates and highly specialized repairs. John Deere, one of the largest manufacturers of tractors and farm machinery, has been central to this transition, making it increasingly difficult for farmers to carry out their own repairs. Imagine this, a tractor that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to acquire breaks down during the harvest season. Instead of grabbing a wrench and fixing the issue quickly, as many farmers did decades ago, today farmers are forced to wait for specialized technicians certified by John Deere to come and make the repair. This not only costs time, but also a lot of money. After all, in agriculture, time is one of the most valuable resources, and every hour the tractor remains idle. The harvest is affected, potentially leading to significant losses for the farmer. This forced dependence on authorized technicians has driven farmers into a battle for what's called right to repair. They claim that John Deere and other corporations in the industry are creating a monopoly on maintenance services, denying them the right to repair their own machines. The frustration is palpable. Farmers are speaking out loudly, saying they don't want to be held hostage by a company, especially when it could jeopardize their harvests and consequently, their livelihoods. A farmer put it clearly, if you have a machine stopped in the middle of the harvest because of a minor issue and can't fix it, you're in trouble. And it's true. Modern agriculture can't afford to stop. When a tractor or harvester breaks down, every passing minute is money slipping away. And at the end of the day, who pays the price? All of us, who rely on these farmers to keep food prices affordable. The issue of the right to repair doesn't only affect farmers. It has ramifications far beyond the farms. When farmers face difficulties, it reflects in the prices of food we find at the supermarket. And in times of inflation and economic uncertainty, any increase in food prices is felt even more sharply by all Americans. However, John Deere isn't backing down. The company has been actively defending its position, filing motions to dismiss the lawsuits that have arisen in response to this issue. The company's message is clear. This is how things are going to be. But farmers are not accepting it. They know that if they don't fight now, they'll lose even more control over their operations in the future. Historically, farmers have always been self-sufficient. They know how to fix their machines and make adjustments to keep their farms running. But with the increasing digitalization of agricultural equipment, this practical knowledge is becoming less and less relevant. Today, fixing a tractor might mean diagnosing a software issue rather than simply replacing a broken part. This has created a new reality for farmers. Besides being experts in cultivation, they now need IT skills or be willing to pay high prices for them. The fight for the right to repair is expanding to other industries as well. It's no longer just an agricultural issue. Consumers across the country are beginning to question whether they should have the right to repair the products they buy, whether they're phones, cars, or even household appliances. The truth is, in an increasingly digital world, the right to repair is becoming one of the key debates about what it means to own something. Imagine the impact if car manufacturers decided you could no longer pop open the hood of your car to check the oil or do small repairs. Or if your smartphone's manufacturer decided that only authorized technicians could replace your broken screen. Does that sound far-fetched? It's not. These practices are already happening in several industries, and the movement to restrict repairs is spreading quickly. But what's at stake here is much bigger than just tractors and smartphones. It's the very concept of ownership. When we buy something, we expect it to be ours, to use it as we wish and repair it when necessary. But with the growing reliance on software and technology, companies are increasingly limiting what we can do with the products we buy under the guise of protecting the technology. It's important to understand that while companies defend these practices as a way to protect their innovations, 
The cost of this is being borne by consumers, especially farmers. And in the end, those who suffer the most are the ones who rely most heavily on these technologies to keep their lives and businesses running. Fortunately, farmers aren't fighting this battle alone. Consumer advocacy groups, lawmakers, and mechanics across the country are joining this cause. They are pushing for laws that ensure the right to repair, forcing companies to provide the tools and information necessary for people to repair the products they buy. This is not just about saving money on repairs, but about ensuring that we can continue to be self-sufficient and protect our livelihoods. As this fight continues, one thing is certain, how we handle the issue of the right to repair could shape the future of the American economy. And this isn't just a battle for farmers, it's a fight for all of us. After all, we all rely on agriculture to put food on our tables, and when farmers lose the ability to repair their own equipment, we all feel the impact. From higher prices at the grocery store to the potential for food shortages, the effects of this battle could spread quickly through the economy. Now, more than ever, we need to support farmers in their fight for their rights. They're not asking for anything extraordinary, just the right to do what they've always done, keep their farms running, and ensure that we can continue to have access to affordable and quality food. What's at stake, therefore, isn't just about repairing tractors or smartphones, but a deeper discussion about autonomy and independence. At the heart of this battle is the notion of control over the goods we own, and by extension, over their own lives and livelihoods. For farmers, this fight is personal. Their land and machines represent much more than just tools of the trade. They are extensions of their legacy, of a way of life that stretches back generations. When large corporations like John Deere introduce barriers to repairing their own machines, it strikes at the heart of self-sufficiency, something that is integral to the American rural ethos. Before we continue, leave a like on this video so it can be seen by more people and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on innovation and technology related to the American market. The right to repair is, at its core, the right to be self-sufficient, to be able to solve problems on your own without relying on a corporate system that often puts profits above the needs of farmers. And this fight for autonomy resonates deeply in an era where technology, while empowering in many ways, has also centralized control in the hands of a few. The question that arises is, how far are we willing to let this go? For men over 40, many of whom grew up in a time when fixing their own tools and vehicles was a common practice, watching the skill disappear can be frustrating. They are part of a generation that learned the value of manual labor, maintenance, and personal responsibility. But with technological advances, the practical knowledge these men acquired over a lifetime is being devalued and in some cases, completely replaced by digital solutions that require specialized and expensive technicians. And the economic impact of this is significant. For example, farmers used to be able to fix their tractors with simple tools and mechanical knowledge. Now with new John Deere equipment that relies on complex software, farmers are forced to call authorized technicians, which often involves high fees and long wait times. This directly increases operational costs. A tractor that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars can sit idle for an entire day or longer, while the farmer waits for an authorized technician. This downtime is devastating, especially during the harvest season, when every minute counts. When a tractor breaks down during the harvest, this can lead to a significant loss in productivity. For example, if a tractor is out of operation for a day, the farmer can lose thousands of dollars in delayed harvest. In some cases, this delay can compromise the quality or quantity of the production, directly affecting the farm's profits. And this loss doesn't just affect the farmer, but also the local economy, as many rural communities rely directly on agriculture as their main source of income. Furthermore, rising maintenance costs are reducing farmers' profit margins, who are already facing challenges such as volatile agricultural prices, climate change, and increasing input costs. With these expenses piling up, Many farmers find themselves in a precarious financial position, with some even considering leaving their farms because they can't compete in an environment dominated by large corporations that control agricultural equipment. This transition also raises questions about the future of agriculture in the United States. If future generations of farmers don't have the right to repair their own equipment, they will become increasingly dependent on corporations to keep their operations running. This could lead to a concentration of power in the hands of a few companies 
leaving farmers in an even more vulnerable position. And as history shows, when farmers lose control over their tools and methods of work, we all, as consumers, end up paying the price. Moreover, the resistance from corporations to the right to repair reflects a broader shift in the global economy. We are moving away from an era where ownership meant full control over the goods we purchased. Instead, we are entering a world where buying something doesn't necessarily give us the right to use it or repair it in the way we see fit. This new reality, driven by software licensing agreements and digital security measures, is transforming the way we interact with the products we own. That's why it's crucial that, as a society, we discuss what ownership truly means in an increasingly digital world. The right to repair is just one facet of a larger discussion about what it means to be an owner in an era of growing corporate control. By supporting farmers in this fight, we are defending not only their right to repair their own equipment, but also our right, as consumers, to fully own the products we purchase. As the fight for the right to repair gains momentum, farmers are becoming a symbol of resistance against corporate monopolies. They remind us that independence and self-sufficiency are still deeply rooted values in the fabric of American society. And this battle, which began in the agricultural fields, could very well turn into a broader fight for consumer rights across the country. Therefore, as we look to the future, one thing is certain. How we handle the issue of the right to repair will not only affect farmers, but all of us. Whether on the farm or at home, in the countryside or in the city, the right to repair what we own is a principle that transcends industries and social classes. It's a matter of fairness, autonomy, and preserving what it truly means to be independent in a world increasingly controlled by large corporations. As farmers continue to fight, we need to ask ourselves, how far are we willing to let big companies decide what we can and cannot do with what we buy? And more importantly, what does this say about the future of ownership in our society? This isn't just a battle for the right to repair. It's a battle for our economic future and for preserving the values that have always defined American independence. If you, like me, support farmers and their right to repair devices or products that you bought with your own money, leave a like on this video and share it with more people. Subscribe to our channel and leave your comment. Thank you.